Hello, this is Kathleen of the World Economic Federation. Today we are going to talk about livelihoods and civil society as proof of work. In today's system, groups that already have a lot of money are always the ones getting bailouts. Time and time again, we privatize profits and socialize losses. We bail out the donor class so that it feels free to melt down the economy with debt ceiling theatrics. Wall Street posts record profits, and the distressed economy destroys incomes across the board. How are companies struggling when they are posting record profits but don't even pay a living wage? Once upon a time, there were at least plenty of jobs programs and a living minimum wage that helped those workers participate in the American economy. Unfortunately, there were also rules in those programs that often excluded certain groups from the benefits of this more equitable society. And because the society deemed it the natural order of things for too long, it was allowed to persist in official and unofficial capacities. The Federation is dedicated to serving the highest humanitarian principles that recognize the contribution and innate value of all of these participants and employees. When politicians say, they are coming for your jobs, they are coming for your way of life, what they are really saying is, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain who is trying to take away what you have in order to give it to my campaign. The Federation is actually interested in people having good jobs and a good quality of life. One cannot separate the value of life from the quality of that life, and the proof of work of the Federation is improving that quality of life. This includes services such as health care and UBI, but also gainful employment opportunities with living wages and benefits. The democratic governance of the system allows it to run as an employee cooperative, while the executive committee coordinates objectives and priorities. There are certainly ways that will be covered that will allow us to execute something similar to the following without the government's involvement. But given that the government already has a lot of the infrastructure already in place to execute large-scale works projects, it seems a shame to duplicate the work unless we have to, especially when our leaders are being as negligent as they are regarding the climate crisis. If the government is not going to fund its programs, and politicians insist that the government should be run more like a business and should leave solving the world's problems to private innovation, that leaves a unique opportunity to allow the government to be profitable. Rather than reinventing the wheel, the Federation can become, in effect, a government contractor. The bid for us to work with the government is that any relevant government organization that works with the Federation will have its costs covered to do so. For example, the auditors that you elect can be partnered with the appropriate regulatory agencies to help facilitate transparency and oversight, which leads to proper regulation since the auditors directly answer to their voters and the government that represents them. Another way to make the government more profitable is to fund the Federation employment programs through the national governments of the Federation voters. So rather than spending years slowly building a large organization to get moving on addressing the climate crisis, we can effectively fund governments to deploy certain job programs while the Federation focuses on its core responsibilities. Once it is at scale, it could be very costly for governments to help regulate your economic green energy employee co-op. So, for example, this climate solution is a form of proof-of-work-based cryptocurrency that we envision deploying internationally to address the climate crisis. This could allow it to grow to be a very large organization that could be costly to regulate for the various world governments, particularly the smaller ones. In the short term, the Federation gives the Federal Reserve System reserve credits to secure these programs. The Federation will use second credit revenue from the sale of green energy to fund system-owned sponsorships, which in turn mature the financial institution's ERCs and repay the loans. We suspect that with adequate engagement from the international community working with the Federation, we could be globally carbon negative in 15 to 20 years. Furthermore, 
because governments already have the infrastructure for such projects. Why not just pay those governments the appropriate amount to execute the green changeover? Those leaders have said, after all, that if something is worth doing, it is profitable, and the government should be run more like a business. Well, the Federation stands ready to do business with the government, and our bid is as follows. First off, there is securing all of the nation's debts. Upon joining the Federation, a government can have a portion or all of their national debt secured by energy reserve credits, which are matured by sponsorships purchased with 20% of every second energy credit. Those sponsorship reserves will be matured over time by that revenue automatically paying down their debt while securing their credit to central banks. Then, in order to rapidly accelerate the green changeover, the Federation contracts with their respective governments to secure the financing of all of their green changeover employee costs. This would include the handling of all of the work and ensuring that there is no graft through their direct integration with the elected auditors group. This allows governments to know that the Federation is following through as we literally pay the government to do it. This means that the government profits from 20% of the second sponsorship's revenue to pay off their debts even faster in addition to the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of living wage jobs as we improve, develop, and increase our green energy infrastructure around the globe. The Federation's role is to be the honest broker of monetary policy, rather than monetary policy being weaponized to the benefit of the elite as it is today. This means the Federation, by working through the governments and their ability to do projects at scale, can move quickly to negate the need for the fossil fuels that incentivize wars of aggression, as we have seen happen so many times. Scarcity is control. Bounty is prosperity and freedom. Which are you feeling right now? OPEConomics are the economics of scarcity and indifference for the working classes and their contribution to society because OPEConomics is about control of that workforce. The other advantage to working directly with the government is that its workers are already unionized, so there is already democratic infrastructure in place. So, for example, the CFTC might be paid to provide agents to work alongside your auditors to ensure the integrity of your system. The Department of Energy might be paid to oversee the deployment of the green infrastructure as the Federation pays for the construction itself. This gives the governments of the world clear oversight of the system itself, as well as the deployment of the associated hardware. Every dollar would be accounted for with an energy reserve credit, and every dollar in time repaid by the government without the need of taxation, while also creating the jobs today for prosperity tomorrow. If you don't trust corporations, the government is there to keep an eye on the Federation. If you don't trust the government, the Federation allows you to elect your auditor to keep an eye on them. No backroom deals, no special treatment of donors when it comes time for bailouts, and no Byzantine system to hide in while conspiracy theories accuse the innocent. The power of the oligarchy resides in their relationship to organizations that have access to a discount window at the Federal Reserve. This is what allows banks to effectively print money to lend out based on their deposits. While banks use it more simply to create credit that will probably end in a bailout and inflation based on historical trends, the Federation will account for every penny it takes out and repay it. The reserve window would hold on to those ERC, and when the credits mature, the banks can destroy them, spend them, or save them. Either way, I don't see a better bid than securing and paying off the federal debt for the privilege to address the green changeover, health care, living wage jobs, student debt. Is OPEC offering to pay governments to restore their infrastructure? Is OPEC offering to repay the student debts of their children? Is OPEC offering to pay governments to create potentially millions of living wage green energy jobs that address the climate crisis? Is OPEC offering a way to end taxation, bolster social security, and fix health care? 
The fossil fuel industry has been around for a hundred years now. They have had plenty of time to help create this society, but studies have shown that the stronger the fossil fuel industry is, the weaker democracies are. We are literally offering to pay the government to execute the Green New Deal without inflation on our credit program. The first rule of war is to disrupt the supply lines of the opposing forces. In economics, a large part of that is cash flow. Just like sanctions against Russia, if you deny the fossil fuel industry access to the funds which they use to greenwash, astroturf, donate, donate, and donate, they will weaken and eventually be destroyed, while the new system replaces the jobs with real livelihoods and dignity. The agents of the fossil fuel industry are well aware that destroying the global economy and weakening the strongest democracy in the world is the pathway to profit and control. Fossil fuel advocates are well aware that the current taxation-based monetary system props them up. That is why they are eager to blame taxes on the non-existent Green New Deal. They don't care. They feel entitled to your money and control over your life to continue extracting that wealth. Federation aims to take a stand against the exploitative employment practices that have destroyed the middle class and to rebuild the economy from the ground up with participating governments who represent citizens who yearn to be free from the OPEC-aligned oligarchy, their corrupt sycophants, and the needless suffering of fossil fuel economics. The work product of fossil fuels is the suffering you see before and all around you, but the story about it is false. The oligarchy likes to tell us that we are lazy and just don't want to work. Shall we find out what happens when there is free school and plentiful living wage jobs? I don't think an employer who promises living wage jobs and benefits while treating team members with dignity and respect will have as much trouble finding people willing to work with them as the others. We don't want to offer jobs. We set the standard for livelihoods and proceed accordingly. It's time for America to deliver on that freedom. Freedom from taxes, freedom from climate change, freedom from poverty, and freedom from those who want to destroy democracy and silence the voice of the people forever in service to anti-democratic fossil fuel interests. It's time to make capitalism pay, like it promised. <laughs>